Hello, this is Carl. I'm a Pro Cycle, and today we're going to have Tech Talk about suspension. This is going to be our number two Tech Talk. Uh, we're focusing on suspension, number two out of three. And what we're going to talk today about is front forks and all the components that go into front forks. We get a lot of questions about forks. How do I adjust this? Which kit do I want? And we're going to try and get some of this covered in a general basis. But the key thing about front suspension, especially front forks, there's no exact, it has to be this. The idea with tailoring suspension, getting suspension that works for you, is making the suspension do what you want it to do. We do have some people that like a lot of sag in their forks. They, they do want it a little bit softer. Other folks want it rigid. They just want it, you know, super firm, and that's what it, you know, they have. So we're going to talk about all the components and things that go into forks to try and see this is what's going to tailor for you, and that's what's going to make you happiest and enjoy your ride better is get it to do what you want it to do. We got a group here, and do we have any questions to start with? Everyone's pretty uh, quiet. Yeah. Okay. Tom does. Going from Confuse straight. us a little. And okay, confuse you a little. We'll throw on the question. Tom does. So going from straight springs to progressive springs. A good are, question. Is, are people supposed to stick with the standard weight that the factory came with in the bike, like 5W, 10W? Oh, the fork weight? Yes. Yeah, fork weight. So good question. Or going, is there a ratio like to... Going from stock springs to a progressive spring or just a general replacement straight rate spring, you want to stick with the stock fork oil requirement, whatever weight it was in the stock capacity. The only time we would make some sort of a change on that is if we add some sort of fork kit, uh, you know, for the, the valving and stuff. They'll have particular weights and volumes they want to add to it to make sure their component works correctly. But just replacing the fork spring, going to a progressive rate spring, we want to use whatever the factory recommends for the fork weight and the fork volume. So that's where we would be with that. And then pick and preload when you go to progressive springs and you got to cut down. Preload's a good question. Yeah, preload, again, that's one of those things. What do you want it to do? There's no exact it has to be this. We found uh, uh, the sag and the preload. There's a starting point. And the starting point's probably going to cover the majority of what's going to work for everybody. There are some people that want maybe a little, again, a little firmer preload, a little less preload. The easiest way to do preload, if you say I'm going to be empty this week and then next week I'm going to be loaded, is get the preload caps, the, the caps that go on top of your forks that allow you to adjust or subtract preload. So you load up a lot, you're filling up the tank, you're going to be in rugged country, you can add some preload with it very easy just by turning that with a 12 millimeter wrench, you're going to add some preload. This is just about three quarters of an inch, which is really a lot of preload to add, especially if you've already got your sag and everything set where you want. So if you say, hey, I'm going to do this, but I want to be able to adjust it later, this is your easiest method. Get one of the caps that we get from coaching. Next. What's the difference in the different drop-in cartridges? Ah, they all do fundamentally. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Woo! Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> they all do fundamentally the same thing. There are some applications that, that can be a little bit different. We do have the ones from Rycor, Race Tech, and the ones from Cogent. They're all drop-in cartridges. They're all gonna be a huge improvement over stock. One of the key things we've noticed is Rycor strongly recommends you use stock fork springs at any change, maybe a progressive fork springs. They don't function real well using a straight rate spring. It's easy to override their, their ability. The Cogent uh, drop-in cartridges They'll work with the straight rate fork springs. They're actually designed to work with the straight rate fork spring that perform quite well. The progressive cartridge that you would use, a little bit more involved. You can tailor this if you're very much a wizard with how progressive products are made, but this requires taking the forks apart, doing a lot of internal work on it, and putting it back together. These two are whoops, drop in items, which I say work quite well, but the big difference is, is, is the application. They're both going to do the same thing. If you say, I'm just going to get groceries, the right core is going to be ideal. You know, if you're just running on the street all the time, that's going to be ideal. If you do want to go and say, I'm going to be going off-road off -road on the tat trail or something like that, take a look at the cogent. That's probably going to suit your needs a lot better, especially getting straight-rate fork springs. that do okay? Okay. Next, one of the things about we get a lot of questions is determining spring rate. Spring rate we always take as, as be it the shock of the forks, What's going to be on the motorcycle 100% of the time? That's going to be you with your riding gear, jackets, boots, helmets, gloves, things like that that are going to add up about 25 pounds. That's a constant number that's always going to be there. People say, oh, I'm going to get an oversized tank or I'm going to get some panniers with a lot of luggage and stuff like that. If you're not having that luggage on 100% of the time, don't get a spring rate that accommodates all that weight 100% of the time. 
get a spring rate that uh, adapts for you, what's going to work best for you with your riding gear on for the general riding you're going to do. When you do have gear on, I've never known anybody to ride at the same pace, fully loaded, as they would completely empty. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I've added, you know, my favorite bowling ball collection to the back and I got all this weight and everything. You're not going to go at the same pace. People really don't add that much weight. And the bike still rides great with the correct weight spring that you got the first time when you do get it loaded up and you're going on your trail. So spring rate, again, is something that we tailor for the rider with riding gear on. That's the primary number we look at first. Any other questions we got? Okay. One of the other things we, we have, we talked about this, getting the fork caps on, we talked about suspension. Fork braces are something that, that it's kind of hit or miss. People like them or they don't like them. And the big thing about fork braces, be it the ones from Warp 9 or the ones from Super Brace, they all do the same job in reality. They're, they're going to attach to the top of the fork stanchion tube, they're going to stiffen it up. Uh, and it's going to keep the forks from twitching. If you're in an environment where you're riding a lot of washboard roads or it's a really harsh road environment where the front end wants to twitch and wander around and skate a lot, a fork brace is great. You know, I want to sell these to everybody, but in reality, if you're only street riding, this may be something you don't need. Maybe just better quality fork springs are going to improve whatever woes you think the front suspension may have versus a, a, a fork brace. A fork brace is definitely a huge improvement in the right environment, in the right application. So that's something you can say, hey, I'm going to be you know, riding in that kind of environment through the desert or something. A fork brace is going to take off so much twitching out of the front. It's going to make so much more relaxing and less fatigue on you at the end of the day riding. So in its proper application, that's a great item to have. Next question. Stabilizers. What do you think about stabilizers? Stabilizers, yeah, again, very similar to fork springs, but a little bit more exact, a little bit more complex. They take the twitching out of the front end, and again, if it's, it's uh, that's a little bit more high speed in a rough road environment. If you get the front end wanting to wander and, and dance around a lot, a stabilizer controls that. It's like someone being there for you, holding onto the bars real firm, making sure it doesn't twitch around. And that's something to consider. Yeah, again, if you're saying that's the environment I'm going to be in, and I'm going to go cross country, and I'm going to do the TAT trail, the stabilizer, again, is just going to make riding in the harsh conditions a lot easier, a lot more control you have. Instead of fighting the front end, you're going to be able to control the front end. Good question. How does a coffee bug help my suspension? Well, it allows you to get the proper amount of caffeine <laughs> to attack the front suspension and, and correct all the issues properly. So that's how a coffee mug helps. Had that answer, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Four seal savers. Fork seal savers. As far as should people use them all the time? Should they only use them if they're in, you know, like dirty climates and stuff? I've heard people saying don't use them because you can shove stuff down in. As needed is going to be the thing with the fork seal savers. One of the things we'll talk about the difference between like fork boots, fork gaiters, and the fork skins. That's a good question. And we've noticed on fork boots, be it the factory ones or the aftermarket ones, that's been something that's always been since day one to, to give that motocross look, to give that old school look. But on the back of those uh, fork boots, there's two little breather holes. So when it does compress, it doesn't blow up like a balloon. It allows the air to go out. But when it expands back up and it sucks, if you're in a dusty environment, it can suck dirt into there. And now you've got dust trapped inside that's going up and down on the stanchion tubes. And you got a big potential there of tearing the fork seals. That's where we like fork skin. You take the boots off, they've been damaged, they're faded, they look terrible. Replace it with fork skins. That's a neoprene sleeve that tightly wraps around the fork leg and it cleans it every time it goes up and down there. It's really pretty much impossible to get dirt inside there. They will make fork seals last a lot longer. Doing good so far. Anything else? Let's see. Do you have a recommended service schedule for fork oil? Fork oil is pretty much as as needed. It's tough to say. You know, I would say uh, take a look at it yearly. You know, if you say I store my bike over the winter and you're going to bring it out and get it the spring cleaning and everything, take a look at the, the oil, see if its colors changed, if it's getting a lot of metallic look to it, it's causing a lot of wear inside. At that point, we want to change that oil. It's probably given up its viscosity value by now and just kind of inspect it annually. And even if it looks good, you'd look at that every year, I'd say no greater than a three year period, I would change that fork oil. I'd, I'd get some fresh oil in there. Again, getting all the debris that the fork oil is gonna collect in it from all the actions inside the fork valve. Getting that debris and all that stuff out of there is a good idea and getting fresh fork oil in there. And that's gonna allow for a little bit longer fork life on, on the fork seals and the fork bushings too. Okay. Well, 
one more question. Go for it. Go, you got okay. him. Okay. <laughs> Roll. Uh, for guys that don't have four gators, uh, or if they get torn or anything like that, and the stanchion tubes get scratched, I've heard guys say that you can lightly buff them so that they're not going to tear the seals. I've heard different things. What's Depends upon the depth of that scratch. If it's a surface scratch, just like a little mar, you might be able to, with a stone, carefully polish that out, buff that out. But if it's a scratch that actually has a gouge in it, it's just going to be an investment in fork seals time after time. It depends upon that it bears inspection to evaluate each one at that time. You're rolling. I'm just I'm, I'm <laughs> it up if anybody wants to chime in. Do we have any particular questions from our social media posts? Well, one of the things that they talked about, and again, going back to spring rates, uh, one, one guy wrote down a question here. He spends, uh, he's got stock springs, and he thinks they're terribly soft, and he spends a lot of time bottoming out. What should I do? Well, one of the key things is get a, a better straight rate fork spring. You know, it's, stock springs are soft. All manufacturers, be it Suzuki, Kawasaki, whoever, they pretty much set up stock springs off the showroom floor to make a comfortable ride, and it's a very pleasant motorcycle. As you get going off-road, you tend to tailor that motorcycle to what suits you, what you need. And one of the key things to improve on the suspension is get a better rate fork spring. Get something, again, tailored for the spring rate that's gonna suit you with your gear and everything on. But that that's, guy says, I'm bottoming out all the time, and he's, he's thinking, do I have to add more oil? And that didn't seem to work. Adding more oil to a fork is kind of like uh, uh, the poor man's upgrade for suspension, but it also creates a lot more pressure inside, and then under harsh and very active riding conditions, your, your potential for blowing out those fork seals, just blowing them out completely, greatly increases. So we want to replace the fork seals instead of, you know, adding more fork oil. Oh, I just have three or four more ounces to each side and I'm fine. It's okay while you're riding down the street, but boom, as soon as you hit a big bottom out, a G out or something like that, your fork seals are going to go. And especially that much more oil creates that much more friction, that much more heat, that much more activity. It's just going to go eventually. So in a pinch, somebody's kind of like in a desolate area where they can't get their hands on fork springs, they realize mid-trip, they are way overpacked and they're overloaded. Can they go up in viscosity? I would add with that. Yeah, if, if, if you've got the, the wherewithal in the middle of a trip to, I can now turn my forks upside down and change it, and I got different fork oil to add to it, look around a little farther, you might find the fork springs. But in a pinch, yeah, if you got to add, say, okay, I'm going to take the tin weight pinch. oil out, and just for the rest of the tip, I've got to add the correct amount correct volume of a 15 weight or, or 20 weight, which would really be firm, that's going to get you by to, again, it, it's going to band-aid the situation, but it's not going to be the correct fix that we would rather have you do. Right. Okay. Being the new guy, what's the difference between straight rate springs and progressive springs? Progressive springs, good question. Progressive springs, as they compress, they start out soft and they get a little bit firmer and a little bit firmer. It's how the wound is and, and how tight it is and the diameter. And so as they compress, it's like almost in three stages. Some progressive springs maybe have a four stage, and it's, it's like the porridge story. The first one's a little bit soft, the, the middle section's just about right, and then the last section's really harsh. The thing about progressive springs on street, they're great, but when you get off-road, to get to the firm position where you need, you gotta go at least through two-thirds of your compression before you get there. So a straight rate spring is gonna be a constant pressure from full extension to all the way down compressed. And that's a lot more predictable, a lot more enjoyable in off-road riding. Anything else? Well, I think this about wraps it up. If you got any questions, you can certainly email us or, or text us on Facebook or something like that. Again, this is Carl ProCycle, and thank you for tuning in.